Hey guys, Nick here and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at a camera bag and going to be doing a review on it and it's the camera bag I've been using pretty much for the past year. If you saw my what's in my camera bag video for 2019, which I'll link up above, it's that camera bag. It's this one here, it's the Douchebags, the backpack. And yeah, so let's get into what I like and don't like about this bag and whether or not I think you guys should actually get one. So if you didn't know, Douchebags is a company that creates all kinds of travel bags. They started off with bags uh, built specifically for like skis and snowboards and that sort of stuff, and then slowly moved down the line into more everyday bags. And this is definitely one of their more recent iterations, the backpack. As far as I'm aware, it was designed first and primarily as sort of like an everyday bag. And they released a camera insert cube or what they call the CIA and that kind of transforms it into a, I guess, like a camera bag of sorts, albeit a very small one. So let's zoom out a little bit. Okay, so now we can actually have a look at the bag while I'm talking to you. All right, so first things out of the way, the backpack by Douchebags costs 249 Canadian, so you're looking probably like 189 US, and there'll be a link in the description if you wanna check out the more local pricing for yourself. So you do have to pay extra for the insert, so you're probably gonna be looking at closer to three, over $300 for this sort of kit. And straight off the bat, I don't think that's what it's worth. Now they have since redesigned the backpack to make it out of a PU leather, which is what they made the Hugger out of. And I did a review on the 30 liter Hugger if you wanna check that one out. The PU leather material is awesome and feels really premium. The material that this particular bag is made out of is like a it's like a nylon material, it just feels like an old school bag and I really don't like it. It's also not really waterproof. I had this on my back and it rained a little bit and things inside were getting wet. The zippers aren't as waterproof as the newer version, but like I said, the newer version does have this, so probably not a big deal. But that's the pricing out of the way. Let's have a look at the features. So we'll start at the back and at the back you can see here we've got this sort of like nice sort of foam padded insert here with a few little strips for breathability. You will sweat when you wear this bag. I don't think there is enough breathability there for you. I took it on a hike a couple days ago. It was a long hike, it was about 11, uh, 11 12 Ks. And yeah, I was sweating like mad. But look, does the trick for an everyday bag. Your straps have this kind of almost like, hmm, kind of feels like memory foam. It's really squishy and surprisingly really, really comfortable, even for the long hike I went on. And they give you some really cool and quick adjustability there. Yeah, and on the back as well, if you have this zipper, so that zips down, and in there you can put your laptop or a notebook. Uh, one sec, I'll show you. Okay, so here I have my 16 inch MacBook Pro. We've got the zipper. Now, this zipper is designed for a 15 inch. The 16 inch does fit in, but it doesn't there. It is sometimes a little bit of a faff to get in, but there you go, slides in nice and easily, and you can get it out easy too. Really good for traveling so that you can get access to your laptop without having to sort of, you know, open the bag up and everything like that. So let's, so that's the back of the bag. Let's move to the sides. On one side, you have this sort of mesh pocket for a water bottle. Again, let me just go get my water bottle. Probably should have had these things to start with. Okay, here's my Nike water bottle. It's your standard sort of size for a water bottle. I think it's like 750 mil and it goes in there. Perfect. Fits really nicely and really easy to get in and out. I've also noticed that the Peak Design Travel Tripod fits really well in here as well. And although it sits really flush with the bag, there is quite a bit of stretch in there. And then they do give you this little hook strap there. Now this strap probably isn't quite long enough to secure the whole tripod, but you can kind of wrap it in the middle and give you some security there. On the other side, you do not have a water bottle pocket, which sucks. I prefer bags to have one on each side so you can, three, 
one on each side so you can use them for whatever you want but it does give you the same straps as the other side and like I said you can sort of like make them as long as you need to and then hook them in they're a little bit tricky but once you got the hang of it they sort of work and good for a tripod on that side but personally I prefer to use this side for the tripod because when I put it on this side it kind of just hangs down a bit too much so tripod on this side and then the water bottle generally I literally will just like loop it through these hooks here so show you here the hook kind of fits in there there you go and then hook it in and then I just dangle the water bottle off the side like so you know workarounds but it works so there's that my favorite part of the bag is this top section here it's like their quick access section all bags need to have at least one of these and so you open it in and you have this pocket in here Let's see if we can get that and it's just made of this sort of waterproof material and it is really cool to get to. You also have this little mesh pocket at the top with like a little key clip, which is pretty cool. But the downside to this is that this does eat into the inner cavity of the bag and at 21 liters, it isn't the biggest bag to begin with. But again, this is for quick access stuff, keys, wallet, maybe your phone. So it doesn't really matter too much, but it's good that it's there. One thing I do mention is that it does have these straps at the front that you can take off and on. Uh, generally, I use them for maybe like a towel if I'm going to the beach or my jumper if say I've gone on a hike and I don't want to wear it anymore. It's just easy, easy to hook it onto there. But other than that, I don't really use it that much, but it looks kind of cool. So to get into the inner interior of the bag, you just unzip both sections and it unfolds like a clamshell. Now, oh, let's have a look there. So on the lid of here, you have a three zipper pockets that kind of come in like that. They, um, these top two, pretty much useless. Can't get much in them apart from cables just because once you zip them open, there's not enough space. This bottom one's pretty good. Again, I don't really use it because the downside to this bag is when you shut it, it's gonna eat into the sort of space here of the rest of the bag. Now, like the other, let's take the camera cube out. We'll show you that in a sec. So the whole bag is just this empty cavity. And this is the big downside to this bag is, oh, you know, you got a couple of organizational pockets here and this little nylon material there. But as you can see here, the bag has no rigidity whatsoever. So it sort of relies on being full of gear to be a nice rigid shape, which is not what you want when you're carrying expensive camera gear around. But as an everyday bag, sure, it's fine. So you got that there, nothing special. Then you got their camera cube. So it is douchebags branded, whether you like that or not. And just pretty, like pretty much every other bag, it kind of just Velcros in. And look, it's fine. It's okay as a camera cube. I find that I could easily fit my EOS R with the 15 to 35. I can also fit my microphone, which is the Rode VideoMic Go. And I'll show you just some B-roll here of it full. And then, you know, bits and bobs like filters, hard drives, little small LED lights, that sort of stuff. But you're not gonna be carrying around a hell of a lot. In fact, I think you could probably only get maybe one extra lens, depending on how big it is, in this bag. And another downside is here, I'll try and show you, is that when the camera cube is in, it doesn't actually sit like perfectly flush with the rest of the bag. So when you're folding it, you constantly kind of get this permanent like lip in the bag here, if you can see that. So it's sort of, yeah, I don't know, but it works. If you've seen by the B-roll, this thing gets dirty. It's probably just because of the color I chose and I have been taking this with me everywhere. I would probably not get the red one again. If anything, I'd probably get probably the black one just because, and the PU leather would be easier to clean. I've tried cleaning this material, it doesn't. If you can see here, it is just filthy. And yeah, it's not much to be done because it's not like waterproof. Again, yeah, so that's sort of it for that bag. Would I recommend it? No, probably not. Not if you're a photographer or a videographer or just wanna carry a camera bag around. It's just, there's too much, too many compromises, right? Obviously every camera bag we get as creators have some sort of compromise. This just has too many. Like it's nice having this top access pocket and the, you know, the laptop access on the back, but it's a front opening clamshell, which means that the bag has to be back down on the ground. And I never thought that'd be an issue, but yeah, it's an issue, especially here in Canada where it's snowy seven months of the year and dusty every other month of the year, which means that this back part gets dirty as, and so you gotta factor that in when you're wearing it. Uh, yeah, so 
you know, it doesn't fit as much gear as I would like. I think because 21 liters is pretty limited for space and I think honestly I need at least 25 to 30 liters to fit everything I want comfortably. And it's just not intuitive to use, so I don't actually enjoy using it as a camera bag. But as an everyday bag, I think this would be a really good option. But it is pretty expensive for an everyday bag, so you know. But yeah, so you need to decide whether or not you like the aesthetic of this bag. Keep in mind the newer version is made of a slightly better material that is more water resistant. But yeah, as a camera bag, I wouldn't recommend it. There is a link below if you want to check one out. Anyway, that's it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed this review, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. And yeah, until the next video.